Coach and analyst will take you to the map pick now. FaZe and G2 going through the same best of three again, remember it. No bigger final, this isn't a major or the Invitational. So it's a best of three final. We'll find out where we're going to play it on in this cacophony of noise and passion that you can hear all around us. There it is. It's Bank, Coastline and Clubhouse. This is actually interesting because it's kind of favours uh, G2 quite heavily. So Faceland must have something to prepare for this. Otherwise, uh, it's, it's not going to be that good for them. Letting Bank through is... Uh, Quite okay, both teams like played. They only have banded the G2 twice, face three times. G2 has won it three times, face has won it two times, so it's 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 clear why it, why it comes through. But then Coastline and Clubhouse, those are really good maps for G2. The phase so. have banned Coastline nine times and only played it once, which they won. G2 this season, different region of course. They've never banned Coastline. They've got an undefeated seven wins out of seven on it. Why are we going to Coastline? G2 must take that as a gift. Or like Face Clan has something prepared. But if you're G2 and the other team lets you pick Coastline, of course you're ready to play it. You gotta, you gotta remember with stuff like this, with letting Coastline through, you don't do that by mistake. You don't lose a, a ban face like that, right? Yeah. So you think there's, there's plans up sleeves? There has to be. Yeah. Don't let a mistake like this through. I mean, you might ban out other maps and be stuck with Coastline, but not when you're a team like FaZe. You don't run out of bans. Normally, you'd probably ban a map that a team never, ever bans and win seven rounds in a row, right? Or yeah. seven times in a row. It's coming to you live from Rio now, ladies and gentlemen, senores and senoras. It is time for the grand final. We'll crown the Pro League Season 8 champion. It will be FaZe Clan or G2 Esports. Coming to you next, it's with Interabang and Kickstarter to take us through this best of three. Those trophies are going to one of the two best love teams in the world. But will it be the one that all of those fans you see really want it to be? Let's go. FaZe Clan and G2 for the title. Thank you so much, Matt, and thank you to the desk and the hosts and everybody here, of course, in Rio. It's been an incredible two days so far. We've got to see some extraordinary matches, some close and some not quite so close, some heartbreak and some triumph. And now, for the 10,000 plus people in this arena, you gotta be thinking triumph is what's on their mind. Yeah, and uh, it all comes down to this. Of course, the grand finals, uh, something that uh, G2 is, I think, very used to, very comfortable in, but uh, FaZe, you know, their first real time in this position, they're looking to break free from the shackles of their past and make some history here against the Titans from Europe. Just to set the stage for you here, G2's run against Brazilian teams started all the way back in season four, the time we called it year two, season one. Those were the days. All the way back, and it was a victory to start them off. And then, what ends up happening? Well, they end up losing in Sao Paulo to another Brazilian team. And then they lose again to another Brazilian team in Atlantic City. Black Dragons, Black Dragons, Team Liquid. And now FaZe Clan. Different rosters on those teams, of course. This is FaZe Clan's first foray into the finals. And uh, even though G2 bans Lion first, if you weren't paying attention, it was announced on the eSports panel just a couple minutes ago that Lion is being put in a quarantined cage. Good. And will be removed from Pro League. And I think that that is a pretty terrific decision. I can comfortably say good riddance, and I hope you return in a better form, Lion. But that's not the case for this match here and now. And because of that, you will see G2 ban out Lion as is expected of them. You know, as much as you can sometimes catch your opponent off guard by leaving an operator in play, which you would normally ban, doing the unpredictable thing, G2's tried that before and it's always put them in a bad position. So they're not taking that risk here. Not in the finals, no sir. Now they'll be starting on defense, by they I mean G2. It's going to be a CEO defense to start things off as well, which is somewhat interesting. Not something you see as the first sight too frequently. You know, often it'll be the basement. 
And that's reinforced by the fact that we have a Habana Ben. Habana, of course, as we've talked about every time we've seen Bank play today, so powerful when attacking, uh, attacking the bottom floor. You need to open up those drop downs. And she can be useful upstairs, but less so. And uh, that makes this decision by G2 even more interesting. Probably just trying to keep their opponents on their toes. Bank has seen a, quite a high amount of play after it had one of the lowest pick rates in the Pro yeah. League heading into these finals. We saw it in both of our semifinals in the Fnatic G2 matchup that just concluded about an hour or so ago. And then we saw it earlier on in the day in FaZe versus Nora Rengo, in which FaZe triumphed, but they struggled on it. It was a 6-4 victory in which a lot of mistakes were committed by Nora Rengo, and it didn't really look like the best map for FaZe, which is intriguing to see that we're back here in that FaZe obviously thinks something different of it. Now, if you look at their lineup, it's gonna be almost exactly the same. Cameraman with Lion being banned will go on to the Ash, but everything else is pretty much ordinary for FaZe. And I mean, both these teams have recent footage to go back on and draw from and know what to prepare for. There's certainly a lot of that. I mean, that's just what you expect, though, out of land events like this. You're gonna have to uh, do your VOD review on the fly in the hotel room. We wait for the next play day, and uh, both these teams are very experienced in that. A challenge early on, but Kanto is going to be the one to come out on top. Astro goes down by the garage. One thing you certainly do not want to do is challenge Kanto, the Finn, to an aim battle. It usually will result in your demise. Even if you are one of the best aimers in all of Brazil in Astro, but, you know, you can only win so many fights, see what changes moving forward. Something we see uh, FaZe bringing out, the Montaigne once more on bank. We saw them use this very well in their previous match against Nora on this very same map. Question is, will it be just as effective against G2? Yeah, and I, I, one of the issues that you saw from FaZe here is leaving Yuna in positions where he would be vulnerable. Obviously, as a Montaigne, he needs a guard of some form or an escort. He's got it right behind him in form of Moringa. Cameraman was also positioned downstairs in the lobby. One member at G2 situated in the elevators on the second floor will be Fabian, holding on to the vector of Muir, an operator that we don't often see a lot of play of, but an excellent read here as Yuna tries to entry into the office just outside of CEO, and he's gonna get quite lit up by that vector. But here's Cameraman on a very sneaky flank. He'll try to dislodge just next to the mirror window, but he knows that his advance towards that mirror is going to be stopped. Kanto Ricchetti pushing out and taking down Moringa. This is a good position for G2 to find themselves in, up by two. Kanto is in a very exposed position, but he's making it work just by getting a little aggressive at the right moments. The honest will go down, though, to Mav, playing a long angle, repelled above the front door. And FaZe start to fight back. G2 has taken a lot of damage, but Kanto is going to get his third kill already in this round. His camera goes down. It's all up to Mav and Yuna. Mav, the only one for his team to get a kill. He will finally shut down Kanto Ricchetti as Yuna eliminates Fabian, evening things into a two-on-two. -two. This is a much better position for FaZe. They seem to be losing the round quite handily. Now they've gotten the control they need just at the top of the main lobby stairs. Mav is the perfect operator to win this. Blackbeard can take a challenge and Yuna can drone four said challenges. It's all a matter of timing. Pengu's gonna get the better of Mav though, leaving just Yuna and the information not working out for FaZe. He's gonna have to ADS to win this round and as I'm sure you all know, that's a difficult thing to pull off as a Montaigne and Pengu will not let it happen. The first round goes to G2. I don't know what that little celebratory arm thrust was, but... <laughs> they won. That, that all started with Kanto's traditional position, and that was yeah. something that was referred to as Kanto spot, where you reinforce that wall, you have an ACOG there. We see ACOGs on CEO more than almost any other site. Obviously, I am excluding Echo and Maestro. When I say an ACOG, for those that might not be most familiar with the game, we're solely referring to Rook and Doc, operators whose utility is not the sole reason for bringing them. If you bring an Echo and you bring a Maestro, yeah, you're probably gonna get an ACOG with them. You can throw an ACOG on Maestro's LMG, you can throw an ACOG on the suppressed MP5 that Echo has as well. But you're bringing them primarily for their gadgets. Rook and Doc, you're bringing for a variety of reasons, not first and foremost is the Stim Pistol for Doc, nor the Trauma Plates for Rook. You're bringing them 
because they're big beefy boys and they can take engagements at a long range. And Kanto, situated at the top of those stairs, can fight you off if you happen to be on parking garage or on rappel or trying to entry through lobby. He's almost always up there. That's bad luck for Astro and a bad read from FaZe to not predict that. And it all really just snowballed from there, even though FaZe almost managed to find their footing. Yeah, so Kanto Kenny, of course, as we all know, one of those really stellar aimers, the thing that made him made him stu uh, stand out from the crowd at the very beginning of Rainbow Six, and he stuck around since then and made his way onto G2 and really been a star on this squad, fully enabled by the rest of his teammates. He did a great job in that last round to give his team a lead. But now he's decided to rotate onto a Valkyrie. Interesting decision. Valkyrie, a very powerful operator on, well, any map, but especially on Bank. You get a lot of information on the pushes, and there's a bunch of great spots you can put those cameras that are kind of hard to find as an attacking team. Another important thing to note is that IQ is less played on banks like map, or banks like map, yes. And because of that, you're going to have uh, cameras that will stay alive for a little bit longer. Interesting operator selection here by FaZe as well. They've decided to bring a Finca, something that doesn't happen every day. They do bring a Finca quite a bit, but it's usually Yuna who's playing that Finca. Yeah. And they don't always have a shield with it, but they're going to throw Mav on that roll. And for those out of the loop, the Finca meta tends to be that LMG. It's referred to as the 6P41, but I don't think anybody actually calls it that. So you'll bring that LMG because it has next to no recoil whatsoever when the gadget is activated, just like every other gun. Usually people call it the Finca LMG. I've heard that because or nobody just, runs it on Fuse. It's yeah. also available on Fuse as the defender. I mean, if you, if we're, someone's running it on Fuse, or they just the call attacker, it the Fuse rather. LMG. I mean, it's the Russian LMG. Yeah, it's available on Fuse as an attacker. None of the defenders have access to it, obviously. The only LMG on defense right now is Maestro. So, you've got Eunuch downstairs heading in towards the server area. He's the pulse of Pengu who's playing in there. And, well, would you look at that? The server hatch is going to get blown, and Pengu has ran away. They will concede CCTV, but Pengu's going to sitting, going to be seated in a part of vault that is referred to as gold, where all the gold bars are. Mm. That's a very important place to be. You know, I have to give some credit to Lycan. He's a coach for Space Station Gaming. He did an excellent job. I went back and I saw all these after we finished casting. He went back, and after almost every single round of something of note, he would chime in on on Twitter. It was very helpful, and he basically talks about how the meta on bank is so routine. It's something that we've said quite a bit. And once that panel gets blown, as it just did by the main door heading into CCTV, your job is usually to just get the Montane in, bait out the utility, and let the plant go off behind it. You hear one C4 go, you hear a frag grenade go off, another smoke grenade will get tossed in, and a toxic canister will match it. Now you got 50 seconds left. That's tons of time for this to still be pulled off, but you still have a Nitro Cell in the hands of the Mira of Goga. G2 have done a decent job of using their utility here, but FaZe have done an even better job of mitigating it, but there you go, the first C4 will land. Goga takes down Moringa, and now G2 find themselves in the lead. And meanwhile, Fabian trying to fight. The attacker coming in through Garage. Not an easy battle, and not with the best weapon. Astro will take down Fabian. And Mav eliminates Kanchara Kenny, so entry into the site successful. And now the A-bomb plant likely to follow. Cameraman takes down Eunice after Goga refrags, and FaZe firmly in the driver's seat, but they've only got nine seconds. The last two defenders stuck in vault, and they will be shut down by Camera and Astro. FaZe take the first round for their team. Fabian obviously dedicated to watching that garage hold once. His smokes were all baited out in perfect timing for the Finca to hit that adrenal boost. Of course, you take more damage when smoke is active and you happen to be inside of it, so you want to wait to make sure all those toxic canisters from the SAS Defender are gone. Fabian with a long barrel on the SMG, obviously trying to deal maximum damage, but that recoil is still very hard to control, and when you're going up against an ACOG, especially with Zofia's Assault Rifle, it's very difficult. A beautiful shot from Mav around the bomb. And that was the third kill that happened from FaZe in very quick order, leaving it in a 3v2, and then the rest of FaZe just collapsed on red and gold, where you saw both Goga and Pengu after the C4 from Pengu did not get the target that it was looking for. So what do we see there in that round? We saw G2 not have a very firm grasp on Garage. It's very important that you have somebody who can lock out Garage come what may. 
And we've seen from time, time, time to time a team on attack to the basement, but one person in a position to late flank through that garage, and that's exactly what FaZe did. It worked out great for them. Astro, I believe, was that player. On top of that, G2 is getting just ever so aggressive, pushing towards the server, trying to retake into no man's land, and that's really not what you want to be doing there. You need to juggle your utility until the end of the round. They still had some left, if I'm not mistaken, and they could have potentially denied that diffuse plant without rushing it. Well, either way, uh, FaZe taking the round thanks to their excellent frag potential and just catching G2 as they get caught out of position. Not to harken back to the match that we casted earlier on in the day, but that push onto gold is exactly what Nora Rengo needed to do against FaZe, the two times that FaZe defended on that site, and it's something that we never saw happen, and is a very good way of highlighting how critical it is to put pressure on that gold play and the Mira if a Mira is positioned in there. We're so used to seeing Bank without a Mira down there that it's usually a Maestro, an Echo, a Valkyrie, somebody prone waiting with a C4 with a Pulse, aiding them nearby. We'll head to round number three, and it's gonna be a Teller's Archives defense. So the main floor, G2 wasting no time to try to go with something new and not opt for CCTV downstairs unless absolutely necessary. Phase a couple back alley spawns as they, at least camera, now in electrical room. And running an ACOGLESS R4C, so he'll take the hollow site, which will allow him to engage at much closer ranges, but if there's any ACOGs on defense, say a certain Kanto, It'll be difficult for him to engage in that range, knowing that he's gonna be outclassed with the site. And Kanto on the move upstairs, looking to see if there's gonna be a possible rotating. He will just miss Moringa as he gets the drone that was picked, or put up rather, just over top of lobby. Opportunity missed there for Kanto, but he knew it was available, so gotta give him credit for that, I guess. Astro trying to challenge Fabian from the main stairs. And it's, uh, Battle that neither seem capable of winning right now. Fabian, though, will take the first amount of damage. So, in a way, Astro wins that out. Honestly, it's just more delay from the Legion. Perhaps going over towards Tellers. The rush from Astro, and he will win the fight. But the refrag from Jonas is there. Great job to G2 doubling up there to ensure a victory in that single fight. Montaigne pushing his way upstairs and He's just trying to pressure G2. That was a deliberate call, a great kill from Cameraman there. Fabian knew he was going down, that's why he tossed out the last coup that he had before calling Jonas for the pull in through open area. Excellent draw, or trade rather, to put it at a draw, but Cameraman's pick on the Kanto is excellent, and because the dock is down, Michael Gogo will not be able to get any of his life back unless you reset him, which is a bit of a waste given that he's only about 10 HP below where it would reset him. Cameraman in the main lobby, trying to challenge his way into Tellers. He's got the support of Yuna the Montaigne to do so. Goga, so low, and as you said, it's just not a great reset situation with such little time to go. Camera, as you can see, focusing on the main stairs so intently he doesn't see the Valkyrie cam. Mav's gonna take down Goga, though. And Pengu, in open area, has a lot of information on the elevator hall, thanks to that camera, and knows he's being pressured from there. The Diffuse Plant going down, but Giannis is going to take uh, Mav upstairs, and that vertical pressure has been alleviated. However, the Diffuser will be planted. Giannis cannot stop it any longer. He's going to have to disable it, but inside of Archives, he goes down to Moringa and Yuna, leaving just Pengu in the post plant. Trying to flank. He will catch Thermite unawares in all likelihood. The fire comes out, gives away Pengu's location. He's got full HP, but he's got to face a shield. It doesn't look great. The pre-fires are missing. The reload coming out. Moringa finishes off Pengu. FaZe take the round and two in a row. Uncharacteristic miss there from Pengu around the corner with the prone Thermite. It's just all the shots seem to sail over one another. And Phase Yuna obviously very happy about that, and Phase in the groove for the time being. Now, if you look back at what we've seen from Banks so far, it has been quite a defensive contest between these teams. G2 have played it in every single one of their matches. They played it against Immortals, and well, the defense won seven of the three. And we saw it against Nora Rengo. From FaZe's perspective, it was the same thing. It was 7-3 for the defense, and well, it was 6-0 for G2. It doesn't really matter which way 
goes at that point because it ended up being a 12-0 actually in G2's favor against Fnatic just an hour or so ago. The attackers winning on bank is very interesting to see. The bands, the way that they shape this, really shouldn't change all that much when you think about it. Because the defenders were winning with Lion unbanned in a lot of these previous circumstances, which would actually make the attackers have a much better chance, you would assume at least, of walking away with the victory. Not to be the case. Round number four, after G2's Teller's Archives hold on the main floor fails, they'll go back downstairs to CCTV, which is exactly where they failed for the first time on this matchup, in hopes of maybe doing things a little bit differently. But they're gonna bring the exact same lineup of operators that they had on their hold downstairs. Got great tools to make that downstairs hold work. That's, uh, you know, it really is a struggle sometimes when you're defending the bottom floor, you don't have Maestro or Echo. It can be somewhat difficult to deny the defuse plan, especially when you've got a Montane shield in play. Now, you see the setup start from phase, and of course, they're gonna clear out the top floor. As is typical, you need to start from the top and clear your way down, deny those rotations, and thus those late flanks. It's really not that hard. As soon as you isolate all of the defenders to the basement, there's only two ways for them to get up. Well, okay, in theory, there's three. I suppose you could run outside to the tunnel and in through the front door, but we're just gonna pretend that that's not, well, we're gonna say that's not very likely to happen, because it's not. There's two standard ways for the defenders to get back upstairs. And as soon as you clamp down on those, it's pretty much a done deal that you don't need to deal with those those flanks. And that's why you're gonna see those methodical clears from top to bottom from the attacking team time and time again on this map. This Ella Zofia fight that's going to happen on the main stairs heading down to the bottom floor is one that has happened between NVK and Jonas a number of times, but with NVK's team not making it past the quarterfinals, it will now be Astro tagged in to do that as the Zofia in his hands will be possibly fighting. And it's a good angle for both of them to hold. Obviously, having both the Gishmat Mines from Ella as well as Zofia, one in terms of a projectile, the other in terms of a throwable. Big shout out to a viewer who uh, corrected us on the throwable versus projectile argument. And as such, the wording for us has changed. It's a good opportunity because you'll be concussed in a very small area. And it's if you have another operator down there that's not Ella, those concussive blasts from Zofia will obviously last much longer. A big part of the benefit of having Ella is that, well, the effect is not quite as strong. Pengu will start things off, eliminating Cameraman. The Ash falls, that's your entry that is going to be denied. Nav has not had a chance to hit one of those adrenaline surges or adrenal surges, and there you go. It will finally kick in. It's only 10 seconds now, so they'll have to move a little bit hastily or else they'll end up squandering it. They pinned one down and a grenade will get tossed out and there goes the Mira falling down. Nav throws tons of bullets left, hits the juice again. A C4 just in front of him as a smoke gets tossed out preemptively to try and maybe catch some cover, but Pengu hold up inside of servers. Jonas eliminating Astro will be the best in that sibling rivalry. And now with Kanto up very aggressively, he will be the first to tussle with the LMG of the Zofia. Mav low on HP, still one adrenal surge left. Pengu off of his cardiac sensor with his back to the stairwell. Yuna will be there, drops the shield, takes out Jonas. Pengu eliminates Moringa and G2 with three in a row. They will equalize back to 2-2 two, two, and it is a very brisk bout of momentum that carries them to the victory in that round. Great job locking down the server there for G2. FaZe knew what they wanted to do, but didn't execute onto it properly. I mean, right tool for the job, ladies and gentlemen. Move your Montaigne to take into server. What is going on with Cameraman as the initial entry into server? That's a bad drone work there from FaZe and uh, some poor engagements. The Montaigne, meanwhile, as you can see, yeah, okay, Yuna got a kill on the Onus from the drop down, but he's also on the drop down as a Montaigne. A curious way of playing that round for FaZe, costing them in the end, because G2 found the soft spots that were presented and pressed in deep. Now, Executive Lounge CEO, top floor once more for G2. And this is uh, the first site that we saw G2 go to, also the first round that G2 managed to get in their favor. So, as things go, this is looking like a first half favor G2, but, FaZe may surprise us. The way that FaZe played CEO the last time they were here, they came from the main lobby, tried to push up those main lobby stairs, and every step of the way, they just lost a player. And it was thanks to Kanta Ricchetti playing by reception, peeking into Banana and all the way over to Garage, the main lobby in the general area, just challenging people and winning fights as Kanta Ricchetti does. 
Question is, will FaZe be able to deal with that this time around? Hopefully, they'll put their best foot forward. And by best foot, I mean their Montaigne, so they don't have to challenge Kanto. Yeah. This bulletproof camera has proven quite successful on different positions that they have, and Kanto obviously happy with that one. For those unaware of the bulletproof camera, you cannot rotate it. Maestro comes equipped with two bulletproof cameras. They are rotatable. You can also zap people. They're also called evil eyes. They're also called evil eyes. Whether they're evil or not, we will leave up to you to decide. But that bulletproof camera that gets placed by Kanto Ricchetti will likely be watched by somebody, usually the anchors or support players that are deep inside of sight and not having to potentially worry about doing it while on the move. Final round of G2's defense, and cameraman in a position on Repel just by the main entrance, looking towards the lobby. We'll use one of those Ash breaching rounds all the way up towards the castle barricade over by Banana at the top of the stairs in lobby. It's a good chunk of uh, Cantor Ketty's playing ground just cut out. We'll have to be a lot more cautious when peeking onto his enemy here now. He might have gotten the camera too, but we can't quite tell. We'll find out as time goes on. It was darn close to where that camera was placed, but no, no, it will not have gotten the camera. Bad ballistics there for the Ash charge. So information still in the favor of Cantor Ketty, but here we go. Face Clan, as we discussed, putting the Montane in front, which is going to make Kanto's life significantly harder. He doesn't really have a way to deal with the Montane unless, well, the Montane does something really silly, like ADS is onto Kanto, and it's not gonna happen. Mav will finish off Cantor Ketty thanks to the open castle barricade, allowing him to cut off Kanto's rotation through the soft open wall. Great setup there from FaZe. And finally, shutting down the powerhouse that is Kanto. And I mean, Kanto was able to put a lot of focus on this round, or on this site last time around, by getting the early pick onto Astro. Swapping off of the Jokobi and going with the Zofia is going to be obviously a change for the better. Pengu tagged in to try and light up Cameraman and will do quite a bit of damage. Yuna loses some HP in the process, while Fabian off site has taken damage inside of Elevator. So you'll see everybody losing a bit of their life here. Having to blow up the hatch is Fabi in a great place to situate himself, and there will be a mark as they know that he has dropped. So there will be a flank watch determined to try and keep eye of Fabian, and there it is. Cameraman lights him up. Oh, Fabian is so low. He manages to scoot away. Jonas jumps in, but Astro finds Pengu, and the sight presence is coming. There's Goga to get one, but Cameraman finally finds Fabian. The three speed versus the one speed. That is not quite a chase so much as it is hunting down the wounded. Jonas and Goga now, they're on deck, and they'll have to try and hold off CEO as you see pressure coming in towards Janitorial. Jonas taking some HP. Gone. He's just going to wait. What are we going to see out of Cameraman? Amidst the smoke is Goga, picked off by Moringa, looking to lock this one down. Jonas, his position given away. He's got a Mira against his back and only 15 seconds to wait. But there's Mav, pulls out the Deagle, and it's the Wandi. Now get Faze the first half. And a 3-2, that's a great job to Faze. Seeing how G2 has set themselves up and picking it apart one piece at a time. Well, that Cantor Ketty roam over by Tellers shut down so early on. And it took a lot of work, we have to be honest. A lot of time, a lot of utility, a lot of focus from FaZe. But as I said, one step at a time. And there you go, that's that castle barricade that was opened up earlier, if I'm not mistaken. And thanks to that, catching Kanto in the rotation. Overall, an excellent round for FaZe. As soon as they had the beachhead, control of banana, control of reception. Montaigne inched forward very slowly and was able to support and call out for his teammates, allowing for one win after another in terms of engagements. Now, FaZe will go to the bottom floor for their first defense, which stands to reason given that they banned out Habana. This is likely the site that they want to find themselves on the most. I'm intriguing to see how this works on the other side of things here. G2 are incredibly well coordinated on defense, but it's always their attacks that look so outstanding, especially when they're able to hold these angles and crossfires. They might be one of the best attacking teams in terms of the finesse that they apply. Obviously, I don't have any statistics in comparison to how many attacking rounds they win versus defensive rounds. I know some people do, though, and I'm sure I will be corrected at some point if I am wrong. But FaZe's strategy on this site looks very similar to the way that G2 plays it. Make sure that you have somebody positioned in gold. 
make sure that you have somebody playing that mirror window. Likely somebody defending inside a garage if you don't have a Valkyrie camera down there. An Evil Eye or a Yokai drone will do the trick. But with Maestro and Echo banned, it has to be falling onto somebody else's shoulders, or at least another operator's, and that will be obviously the way things start out here. Very routine for both of these teams, and in our matchup against Immortals, we saw Fabian running the Maverick. Of course, he would use it as Maverick has intended to do, but not exactly the way that he has applied. Maverick usually using his gadget to poke holes in walls, but not take out hatches. Fabian does the opposite. And it's definitely a function that is, the reason you don't see the Maverick doing that, is, it's just frustrating. It's, it's a pain to open a drop down as a Maverick, and uh, can be done. Most teams will choose not to, though you don't really have a choice when attacking the basement in Havana's band on this map. It's, it's, you know, it's just so much better to get that one extra drop, no matter how hard it is. FaZe will fall back out of server after the drop down has been opened up. Now, this is really big. They just used utility to open the server drop down. Without Habana, that means that they're not going to be able to open up one extra thing. And that might be a drop down, it might be a wall, it all depends. It looks like it's going to be a drop down as Goga decides to open up the site wall, which means it's very likely the hallway drop is not open. And uh, they will only be able to get the site one that Fabian is working on right now. Although, we'll see. Drop down gets opened up. And uh, hallway drop probably still intact. This is something new from FaZe. That lattice wall right next to him that looks like a, is it called a lattice or the trellis that you usually have a vine trellis on? That's something that I didn't see all that much of in Nora Rengo, and I think that's because they anticipate that the utility usage from G2 will be a lot better. If you recall correctly, in the last matchup from FaZe, the pressure from Nora Rengo didn't come through that open wall where you see Jonas and Goga right now. And that's good utility usage. It'll give a little bit of cover here in favor of FaZe. Trying to take that Valkyrie camera, which just proves elusive so far. Oh, Jonas trying to get it on his stomach, and Yuna will send him to the grave. A good smoke from Moringa, possibly anticipating a hatch drop, but Goga going for a plant in unlikely spots amidst the smoke. The mark will come out, and Mav using that UMP to the best of his ability. Goga dancing as best as he can away from the C4s. Kanto will fell cameraman, and G2 will swing the momentum in their favor as the plant goes down successfully and G2 just needs to hang on but there's still eight operators left is there a retake here that is definitely possible however G2's got two bodies upstairs and Astro will need to make sure that he gets back towards that site undetected Goga's down there Kanto Ricchetti cutting down Mav and Fabian is there this is a great lockout from G2 and it means that it's bad shape for Moringa. But Astro sees one from above. Pengu not paying any attention. Runs right into Goga, though. And now Moringa will have to be the clutch master himself. Shut down swiftly by Goga, the Spaniard, with the final kill. And once again, we are back all tied up. Three to three. Beautiful play from both teams, to be honest. G2, though, just a little bit ahead of the curve. Face Clan had those Valkyrie cams in sight, and they were calling out information. Yes, Jonas lost his life for nothing but it didn't matter in the end. The C4, I think, was the real flaw for FaZe. They did get a kill with one of them, but they wasted the others. The fact that they were not able to land shots onto the marks from the Valkyrie cam meant that we saw Goga actually get the defuse plant, despite being exposed multiple times to the bullets of his opponents. Now, it's very dangerous to just rush in and try to plant in odd locations like Goga did. But if there's anyone who's going to get a defuse plant down, it is Goga. It, it certainly is. He's one of the best support players out there. And he made the perfect call as well. As soon as the smoke started to dissipate, he noticed that, hey, FaZe used their C4s. They missed. They hit one, sure, but they missed the others. And because of that, I can plant default. So he was committed to a push into the site. He was being marked. He came off that plant. He came up to get cover behind the bomb, then realized, hey, wait a minute, I could just plant default location. Completely covered, completely safe, and my teammates will cover me and deny the rush. Beautiful job there to the rest of G2 as well to do just that, to cover the rush from FaZe. And despite not having Habana, they still managed to get everything they needed open from the server drop to the server wall to the site drop, which allowed for just enough control to get that defuse plant. 
Goga's repositioning of that diffuser plant was interesting because it burned a lot of time. But more than that, what it did was it also flushed out two members of FaZe, including the one that was playing in red, which is where Kanto, as the jackal from above, was able to get that kill. And by doing so, that's what really tipped the round in their favor because then Goga repositioned after Moringa had burned two early smokes and the C4 was called incorrectly. It left FaZe with no utility. With G2 having hatch control from above, they knew, FaZe knew that they couldn't peek again or else Kanto would have been there to punish them exactly the same way that he did to the first member of the team when he was looking down. I believe that was the mirror of Yuna. So ultimately, G2 just completely locked them down and did so without Jonas, as, as you pointed out. They did that without the disruption, Michael. Yeah, that's a lot of utility to lose early on as well. Mav playing Pulse inside a server. This is a very powerful position to have your heartbeat detector, but of course it'll just be a fallback location. As we saw in the previous round, FaZe did not fight server. They just gave up on it as soon as it was a lost cause. And it became a lost cause when Goga did exactly what he's doing right now. They're reminding the drop down open. It's going to force these roamers to fall back. And they will try to play it safe and live to fight another day. Mav has great information potential, as we've talked about, inside a gold where he now stands. It's just very typical, though. People expect to see this. Anybody expects to see this one attacking onto the basement of bank. So G2 is going to know that this is happening in all likelihood, but they aren't going to be able to do anything about it. Fabian, yet again, going to be opening the site drop down, or he is likely to open the site drop down, taking his time with it. No rush, I suppose. And, uh, that means that the hallway drop will not be opened up. I was actually wondering if he was going to leave it be so he could have a nice angle to see down and not have to necessarily drop. But good information from G2 being relayed to the rest of that team. Goga on drone work will spot the two assailants playing inside of red, one of which is in gold deep. That'll be the pulse. Nav will likely stay in that position for the remaining minute. The only time you'll see the Pulse decide to peek out is to toss out a C4 and hopefully stop the plant as it's happening. But there's still smokes on the board for G2. Kanto Ricchetti sending one off, sends a second off. Jonas will fall to Jonas, to Yunus. C4 yet again, but Goga in the midst of a plant. Camera C4 won't miss this time. Say goodbye to Goga. Pengu knows he can't get in and can't traverse through the wall. Yuna's there to do some work on his own. Fabian opening up a great drop hatch, and he picks up a second, catching Astro on the flank. Now Pengu is enlightening up the defenders, but it's all up to Fabian and Pengu to try and keep G2 from falling behind on round number seven. Not a lot of time left. Pengu holds onto that diffuser and knows that he's got some utility to bait out, but not a lot of time. Mav is still there and Pengu's gonna be playing a dance with Fabian watching from above. There goes an impact nade onto Pengu, does a little bit of damage, but Moringa's there to stop him. Fabian needs to go for the plant. We drop right into Mav. Face Clan up four to three. Great job to FaZe, and the major difference maker between that round and the previous one, the second C4 landed, the diffuse plant was denied. Excellent job again to FaZe. G2 tried their best, and honestly, it looked like a better attempt than the previous round. Gogo was in a much better location, but it was read perfectly by FaZe Clan. Cameraman right there, that was it. That was the moment that everything started going FaZe's way. I actually wonder, that hatch that Fabian was playing on, if they had a, I mean, they had to drop through it, right? That's where Fabian ended up dropping on. But you keep that closed and you wait for a rotate through red, you can pick up a kill a lot there, a lot easily. You know, he, he did open it, he did get a kill through it, then immediately got Astro on the flank through open area. But you keep that closed. You know, I gotta imagine there are some angles that you can't achieve if oh, it's yeah, closed. Absolutely. But at the same time, there is an argument to be made there. Maybe something you go into a custom game, you look at the uh, angles that you can get, leaving it open and, or leaving it, sorry, locked down. And, well, maybe it's uh, maybe it's something that teams can experiment with later. I mean, they do, uh, we did see G2 actually do exactly that in the hallway drop. Well, they opened up the hallway drop, but not fully. They didn't make it so you could drop through it. I mean, to be fair, he was out of juice on the blowtorch. Well, I mean, yeah, but that's, they, that's what they were planning for. Right. He got kills through the hole, so, yeah, right. I mean, that's, you know, You're correct. You are correct. I just, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if the, if it's the right call to open the site drop instead of the hallway drop. I'm not sure. I feel like uh, what what uh, G2 really needed in that previous round was a little bit of pressure from behind. Whether that's a garage flank or a drop from the hallway, 
I'm not sure, but they needed something that wasn't just a frontal assault. Because as we, you discussed earlier, and I think it's well known on Bank, when attacking the basement, it's it's very much the same thing every time. Yeah. So having some little side factor, it's something to, to throw your opponent off is really important. Unless you move somebody in through Garage, which we saw from Astro on Phase's side of things, but G2 has not opted for that. They just have them go in a bit more linear and then have somebody flank watch, which has been Fabian's job. Being shown to us from the spectator model just a couple moments ago was that both drop hatches on the second floor have been opened up, one in janitorial and the other in hallway by trading. And then below the hatch on the main floor as well, all the way down into servers. Mav has been down, actually. He's going to drop the whole way. And oh, Fabian gets a Mav. Oh, no. That's unfortunate. I was going to suspect that those hatches were there to allow for a nice rotate, what? specifically from one of the defenders that were playing off site. But that's not to be the case at all. What the heck is going on? Astro is inside of main lobby. It's a very dangerous location. He'll be droned out. and. Maybe he won't be killed immediately, but his, his location known, he's in a bad spot. It's likely he's trying to, you know, flank the north windows. I get that, but it just seems incredibly dangerous. He's actually going to run out right now on the IQ of Pengu, and he will miss his opportunity and run back inside and die to Fabian. A curious play from Astro. It seemed like they were having trouble with communication there. There was a camera that you saw out yeah. by the front door, and I don't know if IQ was within range of it or not. You saw Astro looking over in the player cam towards the rest of his team, obviously waiting for a call to possibly sprint out. And the camera's out here in the floor somewhere. Yeah, it's out on the it's out on the road somewhere. So he definitely could have gone for that, but very puzzling. And this isn't the first time that we've seen Astro peak a little bit unnecessarily. It happened on border a couple times. Kanto Ricchetti winning his gunfight against Cameraman. Kanto actually comes away with full HP. This has fallen apart for FaZe Clan. And it is a disastrous round. But Yuna trying to put it back together will not accomplish much. He'll take down Kanto. But Fabian there. Moringa will get traded off immediately by Fabian. And these two teams cannot shake one another. Both of them flirting with the lead, but the lead won't decide who to go home with, and it's now on to the ninth round. Absolutely refusing to let this slip away. G2 will keep it in play. I think it all started with the drone work downstairs. Fabian getting essentially a free kill onto Mav, and then a second free kill right there onto Astro, because these roamers are so out of position. And G2 are very efficient at droning your roamers down, and pushing into them efficiently, especially when you've got a jackal of all operators, the perfect operator to hunt down the roamers. CEO, once more, it seems, from FaZe. They're trying to stick to their guns, and it worked for them last time on the basement. Lost it the first time, won it the second time. Will that be the same pattern that we see here on the CEO site? I'm not sure. We aren't seeing a we aren't seeing a shield coming out from G2, so not exactly going to be the same push. Uh, they're more relying on their ability to win their gunfights, but of course that's something G2 is well known for. I have to wonder what would have happened there if Mav was in a better position, maybe in sight, and if Astro had been successful running out on Pengu. We might have seen a totally different round. I mean, I'm not exactly certain what Mav was doing. By the time we saw Mav fall, it was all too late. He got shotgunned, yeah. got the secondary shotgun to the face by, by Fabian down on that bottom floor. And a, a good entry from the Jackal. I, those drop downs that have been opened up ended up proving to be uh, a bit detrimental for FaZe and obviously not a good position for them, a bit disheartening. Looks like we're going to see the same Valkyrie camera that's going to get hucked out through the window by Mav. Possibly try to enable a run out, but you got to think that should be a mistake. Didn't work at all for Astro, and because his position was given away, he got caught as he re entry through the lobby. There are a lot of options for a run out. You don't have to run out through the lobby. You could just vault the window. I mean, it looks like a long drop, sort of drop that would down you or kill you outright, but no. In fact, uh, you, you could just draw vault out. You'll still have some uh, HP to work with, and there you go. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Cameraman takes down Pengu thanks to the camera. Cantor Ketty will refrag, but uh, damage done. IQ lost. The camera outside will very likely stay in play. That outside cam that Mav has been throwing has been so very useful. Even when the runout wasn't successful, the information is paramount. Yeah. I mean, 
that was pretty worthwhile. You traded a castle whose maximum value is probably your impacts if they haven't been used yet. But I'm assuming that they probably have in some form of site construction. And a UMP, which is a reliable gun, but it certainly isn't the best gun on defense. In fact, when you look at the five defenders they have, the only real argument that you could have for a worse gun would probably be the MPX in the hands of Valkyrie. But outside of that, you've traded it off for another operator and ends up being Pengu, who's always been one of G2's best players, often considered to be one of the best in the world. So there you have it. I think that's a very worthwhile trade. And more than anything, it's making the rest of G2 a bit apprehensive. They've slowed down a bit over their first push. That also could be because the numbers advantage was in G2's favor so much on that previous round. G2 going to be pushing up to that main lobby. Clearing this utility one piece at a time, but it's obviously given away their position. Astro in a bad spot as he's just been detected thanks to the lifeline. The Gujmats will be detonated on proximity, of course, and he will fall down through the drop, but eat so much damage and eventually die to Fabian using that secondary shotgun. Not a gun that you often see in gunfights, but uh, Fabian makes it work. Jonas on banana, just trying to fight his way into the B-bomb site. Missing his shots, unfortunately for him. Base clan still have good position, and Yuna landing his shots. Fabian's going to refrag. Damage being done, though, all the same. In the corner, Valkyrie goes down to Giannis and Moringa, the last defender. He's got two lit opponents, but he's got a delay for 44 seconds, which is a lot of time for the attack to work with. One of those attackers all the way by the main lobby, way out of position, working his way back. That's going to be Cantor Ketty. Spray coming out through the wall. Moringa spooked, aware that his location is known, and he will lose the fight to Fabian inside a meeting. G2, match point. That was much more rhythmic. And once Fabian got the kill downstairs, that was all it took for the rest of that team to start the ascension up towards that second floor and begin to clear things out. Phaser just playing a little bit too loose and a little bit too sloppy. I mean, I understand the cameraman played quite well. I think that it's a good trait. But this, Yuna has great information and almost connects onto Fabian. Looks like he clips the shoulder of the Jackal and does a tiny bit of damage. Yuna plays that just a tiny bit better. He walks away with a two kill. Fabian down, smokes off the board for the attackers. That's a completely different round. We are in the final 10th round here of regulation. We could possibly have overtime, wouldn't really surprise us. We actually haven't seen that much overtime over this course of this event. Today's matches, of course, both being two zeros. They were quite brisk in comparison to, this, to the quarterfinals that we had yesterday. I think that Basement is the perfect site for FaZe to push this into OT. They definitely are seemingly comfortable on this site, and they've got all of the utility they need to deny a Diffuse Point. In fact, four of the five defensive operators are going to be specifically for denying the Diffuse Plan. This is why we always say the, the plan downstairs is very much the same every time. What I want to know is, how is G2 going to change things up? Because what they're doing right now and what they've done in the last couple attacks onto the bottom floor is run head first into the defensive setup of FaZe Clan. And yes, I understand it is hard not to on this side. It really is. I mean, finding a way to attack this that's not just pushing through server and juggling the utility, it's it's a pain. And often those, uh, those other ways of doing that are just not as reliable. I get that. But... Still, even if you are going to commit to that push in through server, have something else, one little extra thing that's going to trip up your opponent. I mean, for FaZe, what they did is they pushed in through garage. Maybe push one person through garage at 15 seconds in the round, or you know, just when your opponent's not expecting it. Have them get a single flank kill, and maybe that's going to turn the tide. I mean, one thing that FaZe is doing very differently here, they've got Astro on top of the server stairs, just waiting as the Jaeger likely doesn't have the M870. There you go, he's got the carbine in his hands. But I mean, it could go either way. You've seen some teams run the M870 there. We've seen bandits there before. Typically the shotgun is gonna be in the hands of maybe a Valkyrie, a Mute, an Ella, etc. But with the hatch opening from above inside of server, they have to fall off. You see Mav heading for the hills right towards gold. It's a smart place for him to be. G2 have briskly worked into server. It's taken about a minute for them to do that, and it's a very similar strategy to what we've seen at a G2 time and time again. Jonas is on his belly waiting to see if there's going to be anybody who possibly pushes out from inside of CCTV. They'll get the wall leading into CCTV from server. 
Bob in from above, will manage to get the hatch, and now go for the other to poke a couple holes in it. This is exactly what G2 did last time around. It didn't work, so what are we gonna see differently to make sure that they're able to break the backs of FaZe and take this map home? That's exactly the question, I think. And all that really matters is how will G2 mix things up? Because FaZe still have full utility. They might have expended a single gas canister while we weren't paying attention, but I find it unlikely. In fact, no, Moringa has all three. All of the C4s are still in play, and there's only a minute left for G2 to delay this. Get smoke grenades going down, and it's gonna be a drop from G2, a very aggressive play. Yuno lands his C4 onto Jonas, but Kanto Raketi inside of Vault will take out Mav, and it's just an absolute brawl. Kanto gets three for himself, though, and a fourth! It's all Astro now, and he's far off sight. He shuts down Fabian, but the Claymore from Goga finishes things off, and the first map goes to G2, 6-4. Moringa standing at the Mira as Kanto drops, or smokes, drops, and vaults next to the Mira window. Sails right past Moringa into gold, takes out Mav, turns takes out Moringa, takes out Yuna. I believe it was a 4K that he got as he also took down Cameraman. And nobody was able to relay that information fast enough. Here you go, Kanto's perspective, Moringa completely unaware. Drops one, drops two, Astro ends up hitting the Claymore, and Kanto didn't even need the ace. It's Fabian's Claymore from the grave that ends up saving the round. Here's where things get tough for FaZe. Not to upset the people and put them in a bad mood, but Coastline is next up, and it's G2's map choice. This is a very, very good map for G2. Saronic speculated on the analyst desk that you don't let this map go through unless you've got something up your sleeves. We saw how good of a team Nora Rengo was on border. We know that FaZe, statistically, it wasn't one of their best maps. But what ends up happening? They play each other and it's a 6-1 victory in favor of FaZe. They cleaned Nora Rengo's clocks. They obviously had something in mind. This is when you show your strats, right, Michael? This is when you save everything for oh. in this moment. You pull out a coastline, either two things will have happened and we're gonna see it, possibly 10 rounds or less or more, 10 rounds or fewer, or more. Either FaZe definitively lost the ban phase, no pun intended, mm. or there's something that they're preparing and they've waited to try and unleash it. But they have quite a Herculean task against one of the best teams and one of the most decorated teams in all of this Rainbow Six Esports, and that's winning a map that G2 is quite good on and happens to like playing very much. Yeah, this is gonna be a difficult spot for FaZe. That's for sure. And knowing G2 going into this map, especially, I think that, you know, you're talking about FaZe are going to need to have something up their sleeves in order to win here. I think G2 is certainly going to. I, I, I don't I don't expect this to be anything like the, the coastline we've seen from G2 in the past. I expect them to bring out some newer stuff because you stated it quite well. It was, you know, it's very simple. The, these season finals, you know, it's six months building up to this and then everything's on the line here. You bring out all the strategies, you pull out all the stops, and then you reset for the next season. And I can't imagine that G2 is going to uh, to let this slip by on a map that they're so comfortable. No, I mean, there's a couple things to think about here. Look back no farther than the Liquid, or to, uh, to Atlantic City against Liquid. I remember I was, I was out actually eating lunch mm. and I come back thinking, oh, surely map one is still gonna be going. How wrong I was. It was what? It was a five, five, one, five, two, it was five, one, I think. For, I think it was five, one for G2. Look at this, just as a coastline, by the way, coastline, the only map that G2 did not ban. Eight bans from phase, that is, that is really something. So if you look, if you look back to Atlantic City, Liquid got crushed. Kanto dropped like 12, 13, 14, 15 frags, something insane against Liquid. People started leaving the arena. And G2, 
the time known as Penta, didn't end up winning that championship. So there's still a game to be played here. Certainly is, but you know, following losing the first map, it's it's definitely not a good position for FaZe to find themselves in. Now, it's going to be the same exact operator bans. This is quite interesting. Um, FaZe have banned Habana a lot throughout this tournament. Uh, on coastline, I guess I understand it, but it's less understandable than uh, banning Habana on bank. On bank, complete sense, absolutely, 100% behind it. On coastline, same thing, but it just isn't as apparent. Uh, there are some exceptional spots you can use those Excaros to trip up the defense. Uh, just to name one, uh, you, you know, you can Excaros through the open area into the mini bar on a billiards defense and uh, enable an uh, aquarium push to be so much more powerful because you don't have to deal with that tight angle as you come into the site. Sure, okay. You can also cut off rotations using that angle. Anyway, moving on. It's just getting that opened up is not as predictable. It's not as, yes, that's uh, it's obviously going to happen as opening the drop downs on bank. So it's less of a guaranteed payout in that ban. G2 opted uh, is, or well, G2 didn't opt actually because it's their map choice, but G2 is going to go to defense first. This is, I think, what's going to set the tone for this matchup. If FaZe don't manage to make it out of this attack, with three rounds, it spells trouble. It's always it's always nice to see a map that a team doesn't really play pop the surface because there's always a very high chance that they've prepared something new, that they've got something to roll out, that there's anticipation, there's surprise. And they're gonna need it because they're also staring down Clubhouse for map number three, which is another very good map for G2. Anyway. Kitchen is going to be the very first site, often called the uh, most comfortable site to defend. Mira is available, she's unbanned. The bans are exactly the same as Bank, Lion, Hibana, Maestro, and Echo, which also means that a Glaz is going to be available. However, you look up top and G2's not gonna be running a Mira to start things off with. And we don't see a Glaz from FaZe. So, the lack of these uh, bans while they are somewhat surprising, uh, also not going to matter, it seems, at least in the beginning. That could change moving forward. I mean, you, Fabian said it himself. If Glass is unbanned, you don't even need to run a hard breacher on attack of Coastline. You can make that work. We saw EG run without a hard breacher on console. When I if I recall correctly, Glass was also unbanned, and they mostly did pushes through the, the server and archives side of things. So. I mean, you don't necessarily need that. And you've got Hibana banned here on, at least for FaZe's attack to start off with. You're obviously gonna see G2 not be able to use it, so you'll have to rely quite heavily on a Thermite. Not really a lot of Maverick play on FaZe's side of things, so as long as Moringa can stay alive, they can get the work that they need to to possibly open things up. On Kitchen, having a hard breacher is not the be-all and end-all. True, and I'll gotta be honest, I look at FaZe's lineup and I see two operators to me that scream replace me with Glass. That's Ash and Finca. Finca's great, Ash is as well. You throw a Glass into this lineup though with two other operators that have smokes, the Jackal and Astro on the Dukabi, and you've got three sets of smokes emphasizing how powerful being able to see through those smokes is. So, I feel like it's an opportunity missed, and uh, speaking of misses, we're seeing quite a lot, but also some landed shots here. Fabian and Astro both on very low HP. They will die easily should any of their opponents find them. Mav could be droning himself into the main lobby. That's not very efficient, and uh, that is going to waste some of FaZe's time. They're just working their way in downstairs to start things off, trying to encircle the kitchen. Jonas is going to get the first kill onto Mav with the pistol. <laughs> even needing his primary weapon. Interestingly enough, he'll take Mav down. That's one set of smokes. There's still another in the hands of Dokabi for Astro. This is the lineup that, uh, or at least very similar to the lineup that we saw Bank uh, phase run on Bank. So Astro very low on HP. It's been about a minute so far, and FaZe have looked quite mortal. There's Jonas taking down uh, Astro. The C75 in the hands of Astro will find nothing. Pengu collects his own kill playing on the Jaeger inside of Kitchen. And Cameraman will use one of those breaching rounds. Cameraman sees Jonas on drone. Oh no, Jonas. 
asleep at the wheel, and that will at least slowly even things out a bit more. Valkyrie also from above with the punch hole, but no, Camera had the info, but he misses the shots. He knew where the Valkyrie was on drone. That's gonna leave Moringa twisting in the wind. There's Jaeger prone at the door inside a kitchen with only 20 seconds to go, staring all the way towards Cool Vibe stairs. Moringa will now throw one flashbang to try and catch the Valkyrie, but no, Kanto with the C4, and G2 will claim round number one as their own. Beautifully played from Kanta Ricchetti, though I have to question how how did Camera lose that fight? He knew exactly where Kanta Ricchetti was, didn't come around pre-firing, somehow still managed to lose it. I mean, you gotta you gotta have give credit to Kanta Ricchetti for his incredible aim, but still. Overall, that round from G2 pretty much came down to them winning fights off the site. FaZe tried to clear all of these angles one step at a time, but they didn't do it as a unit, and they were, uh, there's a lot of cases of FaZe droning themselves in and getting torn asunder because of it. So it reminds me of a nice scene from Pulp Fiction there, as you saw the bullets went flying right by the face of Kanto Ricchetti above, and doing his best Samuel L. Jackson impression says, you ever heard of divine intervention? as all of those bullets will miss. So, Kanto Ricchetti somehow manages to evade a spray that would kill most people, and the Valkyrie gets very lucky, and then the MPX just doing enough damage to take out the Ash downstairs in main lobby. First defensive round on Kitchen will go to G2. And for their second defense, they're gonna go over to Bars, which has seen a surge in the amount of play. Penthouse in theater has been on the downward swing in terms of the amount of times it gets defended. Bar will be the scene, and well, G2 is going to be running an identical lineup. FaZe bringing out Capitao. Now, Capitao is an operator who does see quite a lot of play on maps such as Consulate and Coastline. He's got a decent gun, he's a three speed. He's got those asphyxiating bolts, which are able to choke people out. We saw quite a bit of uh, Capitao in Pro League over the last season. It's no real surprise. Rogue runs Capitao here as well, and especially on the bar setup, you can choke off rotates quite effectively. Yeah, Capitao definitely a great operator to have right now for FaZe. Though, I do have to continue to question the lack of other operators such as Glass, Blackbeard. You know, these are very powerful tools that are available to you on Coastline, especially. They're even more powerful, but no, not being brought. Now, Face Clan setting themselves up to attack this double bar. Looks like it's going to be a push in through the side entrance. This is your standard push. They're going to try and uh, take control, well, of first the side entrance. And once that's accomplished, which is fairly easy, as it's uh, very difficult to defend, They'll start their push towards the actual bomb, the B-bomb specifically. Try to plant behind it on the couch using Mav's smokes to cover, no doubt. Cameraman's trying to disable the uh, Sunrise Bar, which is one of the most powerful positions for the defense. And he will have some success. He's pushed Goga off the position, but he's not able to get the kill. Goga, I believe, was covered by the pillar there. The uh, outlines can be deceiving. Astro first kill on to Fabian with the DMR in hand. He's got the Finca boost going on, and the wall inside of bars will be blown open. On drone, you can see that the Jaeger will get spotted along with the smoke of Goga, so intel will be available for phase. Astro's entry through service will be cut down by Jonas after Astro had successfully eliminated Fabian for 40 seconds ago. So this will be half of the round with both teams losing somebody. Astro's Logic Bomb Disruption will not be available and the smokes as well will be gone. So Mav will have his set of smokes on the crossbow for Capitao. Those will be incredibly handy in a pinch. It's imperative that Mav stay alive for quite a while. Second Adrenal Boost goes out and FaZe just hoping to see a run out of some kind. They won't find it. Goga pulling out his shotgun and will eliminate Cameraman. G2 back in the lead here as they're sitting up in a 43. Just seems like FaZe are waiting for something to happen and bleeding out in the process. It doesn't look great. Not a great uh, opportunity to push in here either. They are gonna be able to use those Capital Bolts eventually to isolate their corner of the site. They've got the smokes available, but Jaeger's in a great position to rush should he choose to. He's got an ADS. This grenade is not gonna do anything. 
And now, aware of the pressure, Pengu is going to play even more cautious. The flashes, though, will blind him, and the vault from Moringa sees the kill. It doesn't get refracted either by Goga. Yuna eliminates Kandra Kenny, and Goga goes down! Juris the last one alive for his team, and he gets one, but he has to find two more. Capital playing this perfectly will fault back and play it cautious. He does lose some HP in the initial fight. The Diffuse Plant will not be denied, though, and Mav finishes off Jonas. Perfectly played from FaZe. No response on the initial entry from G2. A puzzling round. Mav, one second later, that C4 goes off. Face Clan loses the round because it was on the planter going off towards the doorway of Sunrise Bars. Sunrise Bar. Yeah, and I, I believe there, there might have been just a little bit of time left there at the end. Not entirely sure, but either way, I, I'm, just, I'm just flabbergasted. I cannot believe that G2 lost that round. Everything was going their way. I mean, and then just suddenly Moringa vaults in. He doesn't get refragged after eliminating Pengu. Following that lack of a refrag, there's nobody watching the side entrance door. What is going on from G2 for them not to call these default pushes and not to punish them? So FaZe manages to get out of this one alive. And that was a big, that's a big win for them, I think, in terms of momentum. Yeah. You gotta get the crowd back on your side, you gotta prove that you can run it up. And I mean, like I said at the start of this broadcast, or at the start of this matchup, to be more specific, is that this map pool is very interesting, these three maps, and I think strongly favor G2. On coastline, you gotta win your attacks, and that's exactly what happened for FaZe Clan, but I'm not comfortable if I'm FaZe. That was so, so close to being a G2 round, and a second later, that Nitro Cell goes off, even if the planter had gotten off of the Diffuse plant and started to get away. The C4 probably still would have caught him. It looked like yeah. he was well within the explosive radius. Yeah. In which case, the Capitao, who was on very, very low HP, was played by Mav, would have had to make a choice. Go for the Diffuse or simply outfrag. That's not really much of a choice to make. You have to go for the frag in that case. That means you have to fight off Jonas, who just managed to get a kill with the Nitro Cell. So, we'll head to round number three, and it'll be the same bomb site. We'll go back down to the double bars. G2 changing a couple things. Pengu is off of the Jaeger. He'll go on to the Mute instead, and Kanto will be playing the Jaeger in this position. Good to have a fragging operator being played by Kanto. Always nice to see. Yeah, you really do need to take your strengths and emphasize them by you know, playing the appropriate operator, making the right tool. Mav calling out all of the electronics in sight. And this is the same attack strategy that FaZe used in the previous round. They're going to try and disable the Sunrise Bar by opening it from above. You don't even need to push into Hookah to do that. You can just ash it from right above. And potentially an exposed player, if camera just shoots the ash charge, but he's being cautious right now. He's taking his time. Doesn't want to risk it. If he gives himself away and there's somebody in Hookah, he dies easily. I think a big part of that too, and I, it's smart to drone it out before you make that call, but last time Cameraman did this exact same thing, and the way that the smoke was playing was behind the bar in a position where Cameraman couldn't hit him on. Now, just one more thing to note, the IQ being brought means that not just Jonas, but more importantly, Fabian is essentially going to be targeted. Yuna starting things off onto Jonas, so that IQ's job is gonna be to find those signal disruptors, find the ADSs. Oh. Fabian jumps on Yuna. Waiting to see if there's another. There will be, but Fabian diving around the corner, pulls out the pistol, doesn't know where the IQ is. Fabian, the double for the Swedish captain on the Mav and Astro. Absolutely incredible performance downstairs in office. Might have just single-handedly won the round for his team with a minute to go. All three kills in Fabian's corner and G2 looking in tip-top shape now thanks to that. It looked like FaZe Clan were gonna be able to take it easily. But what did they do? They didn't drone the South Office. That's it. That's the major mistake they committed that might have just cost them everything. Moringa has a lot of information and he'll be calling out for his teammate, Cameraman. Curious that he's on drone considering there are other players on his team, dead ones in fact, that can just as easily call out that information. 
Cameraman trying to peek his way in through the side entrance. He will spot the smoke, but not land the shots. And Cantor Ketty will land his. Will there be a second? No. Wide peek is not enough. And Cameraman will put one on the floor. Not finish him off until just now. Peeking wide into the sunrise bars. Very dangerous. Camera, though, somehow still alive despite that. And Gogo whips out the shotgun, finishes the round, and puts G2 up 2-1. to one. Very difficult to recover for a team losing three operators. Yeah. Incredible play by Fabian inside of office and just FaZe Clan trying to do what they can. Losing Yuna early, the drone work starting to come in, but just timing yet again. And read and played perfectly. The hands of the iron sights of a pistol, Fabian managing to get the two piece after dropping Yuna earlier on. Yeah. Unfortunate little bit of negligence there from uh, the attack. Yeah, it makes sense though. I mean, you get an initial entry into the south office, you figure, hey, there's probably only one player here, we can make the push happen. But that doesn't really matter. Even if it is you know, conventional wisdom that makes you commit that mistake, the assumption is still an assumption. And it, and it bit phase. Now, Kitchen. Next site here for G2. First site they went to, and they were successful. We've only seen two bomb sites played, actually, from the defenders so far. The two not looking for variety here. They just want to win. FaZe are bringing, again, an interesting lineup, but they've changed into a Blackbeard. I actually really, I really like seeing the Blackbeard from, from FaZe, I gotta say. I, again, one of those tools you have at your disposal, like the Glass, like Blackbeard, they just, they're gonna win fights. And that seems to be what you need right now. I mean, we've seen it. A literally, first person perspective. It looks like Mav has gotten away with at least half a dozen kills that we've caught solely due to that rifle shield. Yeah. Anto Ricchetti, a run out over towards the pool side. There are three bodies, but they're to his left. No. Instead, he looks towards the right. It's a dangerous run out, that, but it can pay off if you time it properly. Face Clan, though, aware of it, of course, and they will not run the wrong direction. Really early adrenal boost here. Maybe Phase Clan trying to go for as fast of a rush strat as possible. Diffuser is a mile away yeah. from the nearest member of Phase, so I'm going to guess that this kitchen push is just going to be an absolute slug fest and look at this phase one drone coming on in mav losing a rifle shield as kanto ricchetti will have to buff himself up pengu's there to shut it down though but he'll get caught astro trading it off after Yuna falls. no more adrenal surges and the frag grenades from phase clan will also be gone that could be enough utility given the lineup of phase clan side of things to cause them to have a more patient approach over the last two minutes. There's still nobody anywhere near the diffuser itself. I'm curious what's going on there. And one thing I will say is that that right there screams miscommunication. Moringa will pick it up finally, but it's still wasted time. And you didn't need to do that. Some curious decision making from FaZe. All said and done though, they do have control of the double bar and they will have a platform to initiate their attack onto the A-bomb site. That's the most important. Astro, entry onto Kanto Ricchetti. Fabian, an impact kill onto Cameraman. Jonas in a great position, but the wall isn't open, so he can't get any clean shots. He's aware that there's somebody playing by the Sunrise Bar and looking for that angle. Mav, though, the player in the Sunrise Bar, will find his own angle onto Fabian. Goga and Jonas, the last two defenders, make that just Jonas, and he's got to find three lit attackers. Though the diffuser has not been planted as of yet. And Jonas, of course, playing Paul's a great operator here, but Astro shuts him down, and FaZe take the round two to two. So they correct course after losing their entry in Yuna, costing them two adrenal surges, costing them two frag grenades, and possibly costing them the strategy that they headed into that round with. They make a graceful recovery and still just managed to outfrag G2, even if it took a minute for Moringa to go fetch the diffuser and tie things back up. That lack of rotate was an absolute killer. You know, the biggest thing for me, though, that kitchen wall not opened up. If you're, you're, there are two schools of thought there, okay? First school of thought, you open it up, you make it so the roamers are able to influence the push into the site, 
Second school of thought, you reinforce it fully to make the anchors more secure. Neither was committed to. Instead, they decided to just leave the wall soft. And I get that, I guess, if you have the impacts, and they did impact one hole, but it's in the wrong location. Still allowed FaZe to enter the site. So that was definitely a tactical mishap there from G2. And because of that, Giannis in a great position, not able to fully utilize it, not able to do as much damage as was necessary. Tactical timeout here from G2. I think this is a good time to pause and consider. Teams use these tactical timeouts very differently. The crowd taking the time on this timeout that G2 is using, as you said, to recover. You might be using it to come up possibly with a strategy. It might be to try and get your momentum back. Maybe it's in the home stretch. Keep in mind, we're in the final round of G2's defense. It's tied up. It's not like it's not like G2 is in any serious issues or dire straits for the moment. This could have been their coach Shas taking this time to go over what to do for G2's attack, and no matter what happens in this round, pick up enough rounds on attack to close it out. They could have done that with the foresight to look far ahead. Well, keep, keep in mind that with the bands the way it is, a glass is perfectly possible. A ying is perfectly possible. We can even see. G2, who have used him quite regularly. Go back to a Montaigne here on this site in particular. There's a lot of speculation, but we first have to get through round number five. And G2's operator lineup is gonna go back to what we saw earlier on, except it's gonna be a Valkyrie on Pangu with Kanto on the Jaeger. And no mute this time. I understand that, I suppose. Mute is very useful, but only in some places and only if their opponent is relying heavily on drones. That phase, of course, are lethal in their own right. Astro also playing the Twitch, able to deal with a lot of those mute jammers. Definitely the perfect operator for the job. Now, he's trying to get his way in there to gather information. Uh, I'm curious if FaZe is going to commit to a double bar take again. And it looks like that's exactly what they're trying to do. Astro just pre-positioning his drone so that he can use it later. Now, the wall is soft in Kitchen once more. It hasn't been opened up, so the setup from G2 is not much different. They are going with the same thing, basically, that they went with last round. Jonas is actually going to, I believe, eat one of those bullets. That was a little bit scary. Could have died, but he managed to get away alive, and that's the most important thing for G2. Overall, the attack, though, a little bit more top-heavy. I'm trying to clear the roamers above before they start pushing downstairs. So it's just almost just as swift of an entry as we saw last time around. But they're trying to find one roamer. That's Jonas. He's taking so much oh. damage, but he drops brilliantly. He uses his nitro cell to open up the hatch, and he's gone. That's that's crazy. I In my head, Jonas was a dead man. And the fact that he's still in play just by itself is a success for G2. He will continue to delay this push, and he's used a C4, but it doesn't matter. Cantor Ketty will eat some damage as well, and uh, Base Clan doing a lot of work here, but unable as of yet to get a kill. Jonas will take down Yuna as he attempts to drop. Fabian also eliminates Cameraman. Base Clan, though, will finally bite back with Astro fragging Jonas. Finally shutting down that roamer. There's still more though in play. Inside a server is Fabian, and he's in a really tricky spot. There's no drone ahead of this attacker. Astro might get caught off guard. He's checking every corner, but oh, this is such a tight one, and Fabian puts the spray on and gets the kill. G2 in a significant man count lead. A shrewd move there, just seeing right through the tiny sliver of light between the two servers inside of security, and a great play, even though both of his goo mines were shot out. He knew it too. You could see he was lying there calling to the rest of his teammates and obviously letting the rest of the flow move on as needed. Goga, Fabian, and Kanto are all low on HP. Fabian at the best position with 75 health. But Mav, that oh, rifle no. shield's not gonna help very much. Kanto from inside the lobby will down one. Moringa takes out Goga, but G2 will finally collect the kill on Mav and also hunt down Moringa. And they will walk through that first half, three to two. You know, G2, always has some nasty little things, some nasty tricks up their sleeves when going into finals like this. And I, you know, Fabian's position there in server is just an example of one of those. I mean, it's, maybe it's nothing amazingly new. Maybe it's something that's been seen before, but 
it's a tricky spot that requires more diligence than FaZe had at that time. Why? Because FaZe had already lost so much manpower, clearing out the roamers elsewhere. Jonas and Kanto doing so much work. So when you're already getting fatigued halfway through the clear of the roam, you come up against that, that spot. You, you, there's no f amount of flick that is going to help you there, no amount of skill that's going to help you there. You need a teammate to drone for you. That's it. That's the solution, and your teammates are dead. I mean, FaZe's biggest issue has always been the fact that they cannot seem to relay that information quickly. It's been one of their biggest, uh, I suppose, weaknesses against Mocket and against Nora Rengo. But against Nora Rengo, it didn't seem to be as much of a struggle. And that's because I think FaZe maybe just came better prepared for that matchup. But against Mocket, a team that does a lot of unpredictable things, peaks corners that you aren't expecting them to peak, well, what ends up happening is if you're not droning all that well, it's essentially the same as not dotting your I's and crossing your T's. You're leaving important things out, the message you're trying to send to your opponent. Phase can be jumped upon from unpredictable spots from G2. You saw Jonas, he dropped the hatch. He played it really well. He looked back up at that hatch, waiting for the push. He got droned a couple times. He might have heard the drone, but he didn't see it. He was actually blocked as he was looking through the sight on his gun. But he persisted. And when unit dropped, there was no world in which they shouldn't have been able to get that kill on the pulse with the drone work they were doing and the communication that they should have had. And yet, G2 walked away with a win in that incursion. Astro, aye. A very dangerous run out. And it can sometimes pay off. But uh, we've talked about it before, and I'll mention it again. Astro is one of those players who will make those bold plays and... You know, I cannot exactly tell you how successful he is in them, but when he's not successful, it hurts. When he is, it's wonderful. He gets the first kill on Pangu, but Cantor Ketty will take out his teammate and start working his way towards Hookah. It's obvious that Astro has fallen all the way back, though, and uh, exactly where G2 does not know. Bullproof camera, good position there. Kanto will deal with it swiftly. Too much information could be gathered from there. Can't let it stay in play. Astro is actually poised to get another kill if he plays this right. Cantor Ketty could, if he attempts to push this, be completely exposed and give away his position. I think a lot of people dream of a Cantor Ketty and uh, Astro aim off here as both players are known quite well for the way that they play these angles and their aim being so, so good. Gogo will find Astro who's playing above and that will cut down one of the roamers on FaZe's behalf. Oh, oh great toss! You to the double, Goga and Jonas vanquished, leaving Kanto Ricchetti to deal with the three remaining members of FaZe. And very quickly, he will reduce it to two with Moringa and Yuna just waiting. But the shotgun of Moringa looking at the corner of the doorway. Kanto doesn't think he can vault. He sees the Mira for a second, his position in bathroom given away but he's gonna give himself easy access in towards service. And this is a very winnable position with that R4C in the hands of the Finn. I'll need to grab the diffuser. It's quite a ways away. Moringa prone with the shotgun blast. Kanto around the corner, the oh! double! What a clutch, Kanto, the madman, silencing the crowd and G2 up four to two. Absolutely insane aim there from Kanto Ricchetti. The transfer as clean as it gets. I cannot believe he won that. It was perfect for FaZe Clan. Everything was going their way, and they just couldn't react in time. Not faster than Kanto Ricchetti. Great transfer, and FaZe lined up as well. You saw that from Moringa over to the Miro was not that far. When he blew the wall towards service, you figured that it would be a good opportunity for the Miro to possibly peek. But then if it didn't work, we would also be standing here being like, why did you peek? Ultimately played extremely well by Moringa. You know how we say that's a kill on land? Well, that was a kill on That's a kill on land. It was two kills on land. That was indeed. Mm -hmm. Kid Turketti certainly proving himself a land player. Now, we are seeing four kitchens in a row. Five total, but now four <laughs> kitchens in a row. FaZe is yet to defend it successfully. Uh, Michael, could you yeah. say that both these teams want to get that bread? 
I do not think. Now, I might be mistaken, but I do not think there's any bread in those ovens, Parker. You have no idea what's in the kitchens, Michael. I won't concede to the main. Face Clan set up fairly well for a deep roam on coastline, as is usual, of course, on this map. He's going for the peak, though. This is Astro again going for the aggressive play. Last time it worked out for him, so okay, I could see that point. But still, so very dangerous. And when you're in a situation, you've already lost the first map. These risks, I, I question them. It's better, though, than FaZe going tame. So at least there's that. Kedraketi will catch Astro if he attempts to rotate back into Aquarium, but does not seem to be Astro's plan right this minute. We did actually see a, a Cantor Ketty Astro Amon, if you recall, on the first map. That is true. Yeah. Cantor Ketty. Canto won quite handily. <laughs> oh, yes. It was actually pretty fast in the round. Astro was playing on Garage. Oh, I mean, you're a Dokubi. I mean, unless he's got a, an ACOG on the DMR with the DMR out and is not running with the C75, which I know that Astro favors over the SMG12 in most instances. Yeah. So. Now, down in the bottom right hand corner. Only once has a team won a land final without dropping a map. It was Penta, season five, where they beat Team Font in the semifinal. And of course, that is now G2. So. And Font is now phase. So, here we go. Jonas takes down Astro, and uh, that 2 0 prophecy might just come true if things continue in this direction. The pre fire from the Valkyrie in the main lobby, not going to find purchase. Cameraman, though, doubling up on this angle. Yuna's going to see four Pengu from below. It's not all lost yet for the Brazilians. The crowd reawakened thanks to that kill. It's a good start. And Pengu taking out the, taking out the, the, I guess, rather, let me start again. Taking out the EMP of Pengu is important. It's not going to do much to disable FaZe Clan's lineup. It's going to eliminate the goo mines, and that's about it. All it's going to do is stop the cameras yeah. from working temporarily of the Valkyrie. It would stop Vigil's cloak from going off, but Astro is dead, and that usually stops the cloak from going off enough on its own. <laughs> hard, to, hard to activate it when you're not on the battlefield. From above, Fabian still using those sledge holes quite effectively. Kanto Ricchetti inside of sight. This is Shades of Phase with Goga now eliminating Moringa. Trade it off. Off screen with Mav eliminating Jonas and Fabian there to Yuna. Oh, what? Mav again on the cameraman. That is tough. Under pressure, Fabian will sledge down and with the L85, put his team on match point. 6-4 through the first map and now 5-2 on coastline, running it up on attack, exactly as you do on coast. Now, I will say that team kill for Mav was unfortunate, but I don't think it really merits more than that. Whoops, Mav, you made a mistake. Honestly, to me, the greatest flaw in that defense from FaZe was the fact that nobody was watching Kitchen. Kanter Kenny just walked in. He had full control of the A bomb site for a good chunk of that round. And there's the team kill from Mav at the end, shooting his teammate out in open area. Unfortunate. So match point with attacking Rounds lining up right now. Four rounds on Kitchen, as you said, FaZe, knowing that they have no real recourse. It's win or go home from here till overtime. Those trophies will go into the hands of G2. And you know, it's got to sting even more considering if FaZe goes home empty-handed, empty they're not going very far to get home. It'll be a short, sad drive. Yes. Or flight, probably a flight. I would imagine. Yeah. So it's actually quite a long drive. Yeah, but still, in short, Brazil, short the Brazilians currently struggling, and that's the story. I understand. Right. <laughs> G2 right now, as I think most expect out of them, performing. And you know, I cannot say I'm surprised, although I expect FaZe to put up more of a fight than this. We need to see them get overtime. We need to see them bring it to a third map. This cannot be the FaZe Clan that we're used to seeing. And you see their smiles on the face That's good. of Yuna. They need that. 
That's fantastic. Keep your head in it. You see a lot of dour looks on people's faces. You see them quite upset. Typically, Yuna apparently having a great time right now, despite the fact that his team is trailing two to five. Astro with so many spawn peaks that we see, just flirting with that open doorway. And nobody over towards the ruins side of things. There will be one member of G2 that will be underneath him, opening up office. That's Goga, but Goga will think better of it. Jonas will go in instead, with Goga going on to the uh, cassette threat, as it's technically called, but in all reality is the electronic gadget that IQ has to make sure that you can find any electronics there. Cantor Ricchetti up on tarps. Goga's first kill is going to be on to Yuna. Oh, no. Oh. Say goodbye to the Mira. And that is going to leave FaZe battling from behind. Kanto coming so close to eliminating Moringa and just will not be able to catch the legs of the smoke. Moringa will manage to just get away. And after Goga to get the kill, it's traded off a little bit late by Mal. Opening up the mirror window and ejecting that glass is going to be Kanto outside on the purple or pink tarps, depending on how you see colors. And a nice long angle. The crowd doing everything in their power to try and imbue FaZe with as much energy as possible. G2 right now, firmly in the driver's seat. It could be the last one minute and 40 seconds of this tournament. Astro still aggressively playing inside of Aquarium, and he will be finished off from below. Fabian, great coordination with his team. Pangu takes down Moringa, and FaZe are in a two versus four. Stopped by the logic bombs as Pangu decides to hit the phone calls. Jonas finds Cameraman and Mav as FaZe's sole member. They won in North America, they won in Europe, and they've done it for the first time in South America. Your champions for the season eight finals, the most decorated team in Rainbow Six will put another trophy in their cabinet back home. G2 win. Continuing their legacy of success is really the entire story. G2 expected to win all that they go into, and once more, they will live up to those expectations. FaZe, as I'm sure they are dismayed, they're still a great team, and they did their best to make that happen. But in the end, it just wasn't enough. They have a lot to be proud of. FaZe as a team after dropping Gohan. I think people were quite skeptical of the Yuna pickup. He'd mostly been playing on teams that were or somewhere in the orbit. That was far away from the top of the standings in Latin America. But Yuna has been an incredible boost to this team. And I know that it rings hollow saying that you can be proud in defeat when first place was so, so close and those championship trophies would have looked really nice here in Brazil. But FaZe can be very happy. They've got a bright future with Yuna at the helm of that team, putting in probably the best performance that we've seen out of this roster yeah. over the last little while. Going into the Six Invitational in 2018, if you recall, Michael, a lot of people thought that the FaZe team at the time was to be feared, and many people expected a FaZe versus Penta final. They finally got it, but it was a FaZe versus G2 final here in Rio de Janeiro and a standing ovation for the hometown heroes and a show of thanks to the many tens of thousands or 10,000 Brazilian fans in attendance who stayed till the very end. Definitely a merited win though for G2 and you know as much as it is sour for the crowd it is certainly sweet for the Europeans. Now that's it from us on the caster's desk. Michael, it has been a year since we casted our first LAN event together and it has been quite a whirlwind of oh, yeah. time. It's been a real pleasure. I look forward Likewise. to many, many more. On behalf of Milos and Emzo, the excellent casting that they gave you as well. We'll throw it down to the stage for the award ceremony. Estamos aqui com os nossos grandes campeões da Pro League de Rainbow Six Siege, a equipe da G2. Muitas palmas para eles, parabéns à equipe da G2! Baby was keeping the shoes, the secrets. I can take them off if you like, you see there, we go. There. Fabian, can you guys be stopped? I mean, sometimes it's gonna happen. I mean, it happened in Atlantic City, and it's happened in Valencia, and I can't remember where we were, Sao Paulo. That was the last time we were in Brazil. We can't be stopped, just not today. 
Perguntei pra ele se eles podiam parar, ele falou, se eles podiam separar, ele falou sim, aconteceu várias vezes, aconteceu com a Liquid, Atlantic City, aconteceu várias vezes, mas hoje a gente não conseguiu. Any final words for the crowd and for our celebration here? I mean, we're not the winner they hoped to see here, but I still appreciate that you show up. It's, we're all here for the same reason, as I said, in the quarterfinals. We all love Rainbow Six Siege. Galera, ele falou, a gente sabe que vocês não estavam torcendo pra gente, mas eu tô muito feliz de ver todos vocês aqui torcendo pelo Rainbow Six. Fabian, the win, the, the win is yours, the title is yours, the trophy is yours. Go get it, you guys deserve it. Okay. Finalizamos aqui a nossa temporada depois de meses. Eles que tiveram, né? Depois de duas temporadas que eles foram eliminados por brasileiros, eles sobem aqui nesse palco e eliminam a Face Clan e são os grandes campeões. É um prazer enorme estar com todos vocês aqui hoje. Muito obrigada pela presença de vocês. Vocês que estavam assistindo de casa e viram esse show incrível. Vocês que lotaram essa arena e torceram e ficaram o dia todo aqui. Muito obrigada, Sarda, do parceiro. Muito obrigada por estar aqui com você hoje. Valeu, galera! Boa noite! incredible scenes as that incredible team do it again. G2 Esports title holders. This time it's a pro league. They've had a few in their past and uh, they've been, you know, the team who've collected the most, but they just haven't been able to pick one up for a while. They finally got it back in their hands. They've got a sledge from February. They've got a shield from the major in August to put it alongside. Congratulations to the boys. G2 Esports deserving their title here in Rio. A more of a one-sided final than anybody wanted particularly this crowd of course who all wanted phase to win but g2 showing they are so dominant so dominant and like we talked about the map fixing in the beginning like i think phase kind of shot themselves to the leg with the absolutely map, with the with the map fans and uh well g2, g2 took it 6-2 in the end in the coastline so yeah that's a familiarity isn't it yeah. we know that one you're right aren't you about the maps we, we said earlier why are we going to coastline that should never have happened here but from talking to phase and from looking around behind the scenes during this whole tournament i'm chatting to mock it they said when they were doing the ban phase against phase phase just didn't really seem to have a plan in mind it's it feels like phase are going to learn from this that the map picks and bans stating the obvious i feel are really important to prepare for and it's totally let them down here in the final yeah like map bans are really important because that's where you can half win the match already if you get the maps you want to play because when you do the preparation work you think about the maps that are probably going to play it then you can prepare more time for the maps that have the higher chance to be played so yeah I, it's really important phase of the game talking about preparing i think everyone has to go home now and and watch g2 there is so much to learn from that in terms of discipline how they play how they're always there to help each other and the, like the amount of mistakes that are made on g2 side is so minuscule compared to to other teams even though we see them get double c forward and, and stuff goes wrong they, they clutch so many 2v4s they they're way more grounded and they just work a, they work together a lot better than anyone else. It's been a pleasure working with you guys and bringing you to Pro League Final. One more thing we should just touch on. Welcome back to Pro League. Thank Hence you, return to the European Pro League for Season 9. That's going to come in a little while. My thanks to Zoronic and Wilkie for being such fine gentlemen to share a desk with. And to this incredible crowd in Rio who've given us just an unforgettable experience. And I'm sure you share that pleasure as well. G2 are our champions of Pro League Season 8. The next time we go to an arena, it'll be for the Six Invitational in Montreal in February. Before that, we've got some games to play and some teams to find. We know some of them. We need some more to join us. You 
found out earlier on from Ubisoft about how that's going to work out and qualifiers for the Six Invitational. You also found out about Operation Wind Bastion. That's going to be yours very soon. But right now, this arena, while the heart still belongs to Rio, the win belongs to G2 Esports. I'm Matt Andrews. Thank you so much for joining us on behalf of ESL, Ubisoft, and everybody involved. This has been the Pro League, our biggest one ever. And Rainbow Six Siege, as always, is here to stay.